Hi, this is Jenny with TheLittlestWay.com. Welcome to day one of my 31 days of Bible quotes. I had originally planned on just jumping right in and starting to write on a topic. Uh, this next 31 days is going to be on topics like anger, patience, pride, joy. If you've ever Googled what does the Bible say about, then you are in the right place because I'm going to let you know. I'm going to compile it all in one easy, convenient place so you don't have to, to search around the internet to see what Google uh, directs you, which way Google directs you to tell you what does the Bible say about love or peace or patience. Um, instead of jumping right into it providentially, I'm going to go backwards a little bit. I'm going to tell you how I became a Bible reader. I mentioned in my introductory post that my Bible journaling and my Bible reading has seemed to slip a little bit lately, um, gotten a little fluid now that school and sports activities have started and I haven't been taking the time that's necessary for me personally in my Bible reading. And so I committed to this 31 days of writing about Bible quotes to help myself and to hopefully encourage and help you as well. But now I'm going to go back to 2009. I was struggling mightily with my mind. And I started providentially seeing a Christian, a biblical counselor. And uh, it was through him that I learned that the Bible wasn't just some dusty book that you pulled off the bookshelf to read occasionally. And it wasn't even just some... Uh, a bunch of words just kind of put together to, to chronicle the life of Jesus. The Bible was actually the living and active Word of God, and, and He taught me that the Bible, the Word of God, were tools to help us in our day-to-day -day life. And for me personally, they were my tools to fight the battle that was raging in my mind. So I, I had started seeing this biblical counselor. I was struggling with anxiety and fear and um, a battle in my mind. Really, I, struggling, struggling doesn't begin to describe what I was dealing with. And at the time, I had started keeping a journal, a couple journals sporadically. Some of them I've thrown out. I didn't, didn't want to reread where I was and what I had written couple of them, bits and pieces I've kept, because I thought there might come a point to where I would need to remember where I had been, remember God's faithfulness to me and His companionship with me during those times. Today, I was cleaning out my closet, and I came across those journals, and as I started reading them, I thought, these were not just kept for me. These were kept for the encouragement of someone else, and you're that someone else. So I'm just going to read a few entries that I had made in these journals, and uh, they're a little piecemeal, but hopefully I can piece them together and um, link to how they are um, going to help me, help us as we journal through or as we read our Bible for the next 31 days, talking about the different topics that we flip through. Uh, the first thing that I want to read to you, again, this isn't in any particular order. This is just how they were written down and how I've come across them. This journal entry is from 2009, uh, August 31st, 2009, and this was just where I was at. And speaking of where I was at, I am right now sitting in my temporary office, which is my car. I'm waiting for my daughter who's helping to teach catechism to preschoolers. Uh, as I mentioned in the introductory post, if you're here for a slick, well put together, professional looking, um, uh, I, I don't know, presentation, you might be in the wrong place at least right now. Might be a while before I get there. If you're looking for someone who's trying, someone who will encourage you, 
or cry with you or just hold your hand, then you are in the right place. So back to August 31st, 2009. This is what I wrote. The emotions come rapidly. They rise up like a swollen creek. The interior storm rages and I feel swept up in a torrent of fear and anxiety. I search for something to cling to. Psalm 17:3 The Lord is my firmament, my refuge and my deliverer. My God is my helper and in him will I put my trust. I find him in this storm. I recall his words and his promises. I am battered and weary. I find my rest in him and this storm has subsided. So that was in 2009. Uh, in 2010 I had written, I would make it a practice when a negative thought would come into my mind. I would write that negative statement down and I would rewrite it and replace it with a positive statement. So my negative statement that came into my mind was, this is too hard and I am scared. And my response to myself, my positive statement, this is hard. I am changing years and years of lousy thinking, but look how God has led me and answered me. Look how far I've already come, and things that were meant for my destruction only made me stronger and brought me closer to God. The Lord has delivered me from all my fears, Psalm 34, 4, and made me more than a conqueror. So let me go back to where I had mentioned that I was changing years and years of lousy thinking. So as I was seeing this biblical counselor, one day I had asked him, uh, what, what's my diagnosis? Like, give me an official term for what I'm dealing with here. And he would never give me this, this insurance worthy term. And so I would go home and I would Google and I would scare myself and uh, you know, convinced that I had who knows what. And one day I came across what I felt like would have been my official diagnosis. And so I went to him and I said, this is it. This is my official diagnosis. I think this is what I have. And he said, yes, that would be your official diagnosis. I wrote it down after our first meeting. And he showed me my chart and there he had written this down. And I was angry and I said all of this time that I've been wondering what's wrong with me why did you not tell me this and he said because I did not want you to put on that label I did not want you to take that on I wanted you to clothe yourself with the Word of God I wanted you to recognize the tools without having this label um, strapped to you. And I was so thankful and so appreciative of um, his direction because I would have identified myself with a label or a diagnosis. And instead, I was in the process of learning to label myself as a child of God. And I was learning that um, I wasn't this diagnosis, I was this conqueror using my tools, the Word of God. That's what he taught me. So one day though, um, I don't know if this was, bef this must have been before. So one day before, I said, look, let, let's just make this official. Like I'm an insurance company and I contact you and I ask you about Jenny and I say, what's her diagnosis? And he said, addicted to lousy thinking. Okay, what's her treatment plan? Replace lousy thinking with the Word of God. Trust and think about what she is thinking about. And then I challenged him. And what is the prognosis? And he looked me directly in the eye and said, 
God never fails. God never fails. So whatever you're struggling with, whatever you need encouragement in, um, we are going to study the Word of God for the next 31 days for the month of October. And God's Word never fails. The scriptures say He sends His Word out and it does not return void to Him. And um, that that's your prognosis too. God never fails. And you might have the same diagnosis. You might be addicted to lousy thinking. And so you need to start replacing that lousy thinking with the Word of God. Uh, and the last thing that I had written, this was in 2010, and I needed this reminder today. So happy I cleaned out my closet. Um, this goes back to what I had said in the original post about um, St. Therese. You know, they, they didn't have many books around. The books that they did have would have been the Bible. And so she would mention that she meditated on the Word of God. And in order to meditate on the Word of God, she had to read the Word of God. This is a quote. I'm not sure where it came from. Regular reading of the Bible extends the breadth of our familiarity with Scripture. In holy reading, we absorb the Word in depth. So, we are going to do regular reading of the Word of God. We are going to extend our knowledge. We are going to increase our intimacy with the Word of God, with Jesus Christ Himself, who is the Word. And we are going to die to self, which sounds awesome because I get a little too caught up in myself. So welcome to my 31 days of Bible quotes. I'm going to link to my favorite Bible. If you don't have one, I encourage you to get this one. Um, if you have one, grab it, grab a pen, grab a journal, and let's go through the month of October reading and meditating and repeating the Word of God for our own encouragement and for the encouragement of others. Thanks. This is Jenny from the littlestway.com and I look forward to spending the month of October with you.